Always look forward to our Thursday segment with the former Mount up. hard-hitting safety out of Alabama. Spent a uh, spent eight years with the New Orleans Saints, ten years with the Carolina Panthers, a decade in the league. Recognizes a Saints great, a part of that 2006 draft class, and an 09 world champion every Thursday with us here on Off the Bench. Good morning, Ro. How are you? And I, I just, you know, I just get in the zone every time. Yes, you every time. Yeah, regulators, man. baby. The Every locker room. time, baby, I, I mount up, dog. All right, man, it's time to kick off. Here we go. Last week, um, we knew the challenge. Everybody did. You did. You you knew the challenge of going into to CenturyLink Field to the 12th man in Seattle and without Drew Brees and the Saints coming out of there, not only with a win, but but a commanding win. What did you make of last Sunday for New Orleans? Hey, look, I was shocked. You, I, I think I was on this radio. I said I didn't know if they'd be able to do it. It's going to be a tough mm-hmm. one. And when you go out here – this just lets me know that this is a great team. Great teams find ways to win regardless of the situation. Um, they came out, they played played a tough defense. They had a cold, but that fourth and one stop where Dennis Allen lost his mind. He didn't even know what so to do with good. It was so good. It was, <laughs> that was so that good. That was the best thing I saw on Sunday. I, he didn't even know what to do with himself. Yes. So and, uh, and, you know, they had defensive stops. They had a, a couple other ones. They had another one in the red zone. Defensively, they played lights out. The score was closer than what the, than what the game really was uh, because they had that late touchdown late. Uh, but overall, I thought, you know, Alvin Kamara played big. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, so happy and proud of him for, you know, you root for guys like that, Hell for, yeah. you know, everything he's been through. To go out and lead this team because nobody thought he'd be in this position again. And it was just a really great team win. As much success as I had in New Orleans through all those years and all the games he won, we could never go and win in Seattle. And for this team to go out there and do what they did on the road without Drew Brees, I just never knew that we had to play without Drew Brees to get a win in Seattle. One of the first names you brought up last <laughs> week. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. One, one of the first names you brought up last week without Brees that was going to be a guy that had to step up was Demario Davis from a leadership standpoint. I called that. You did. You did. And they showed the <laughs> video of him in the, in the pregame huddle kind of going through that chant that Brees usually leads. And it was, man... It it had it had goosebumps, goosebumps and, and then dude. he's the one that comes yeah. up with the fourth and one stop. What does Davis mean inside that locker room, bro? I told you, man, he is the heartbeat of that defense. He, you know, Cam George, the captain, been there forever. But when you when you see a guy that consistently gives it his all on the field day in day out, whether it's practice, whether it's a game, the little things, the little intangibles, man, the way he's able to communicate with guys, bring guys closer together. Because look. Talent is in abundance in the NFL. We, every team is talented, but it's the teams that can come together the fastest and play for the guys beside of them because it means a little bit more. Those teams are the ones who you're going to be looking at at the end of the year that separate themselves from the pack. And I think the Mario Davis is one of those guys that brings guys together on teams and makes their and rises the, the play of the people around him. And we see that. You know, I, I've seen it in practice. I've witnessed it, and now the rest of the world and the rest of the Houdat fans are noticing it because this guy, this guy is a baller, man. Yep. He, he should have made the Pro Bowl last year. Yep. He's flying around making plays this year, and he's only going to continue to make this team better. It's just crazy he the looks parallels. Incredible in a uniform, too. well, to me, it's wild the parallels between him and Vilma too. I mean, do you know inside linebackers coming from the Jets? It just completely like fix a lot of the problems you have. They bring leadership. It's it, I'm big Demario Davis fan. Uh, okay, before we look forward to next week, one more on last week. Road, did you see? The Teddy Bridgewater video from after the game in the locker room when he's thanking yes, the team. Yeah. So kind of, I, I guess, just from a, a, a like as a player, like are those the feelings that you miss that that post locker room success? No, because I don't want to be all uh, emotional and sweaty. I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this though. All right, what Teddy Bridgewater said was so good though. All right, life is sensitive. I was just talking about that to somebody else. Life is sensitive. Football is sensitive. Like, things can be taken away. This guy was in practice a couple years ago in practice. We're in a controlled environment. And he do, he does uh, catastrophic knee injuries where he couldn't play for 18 months. Yeah. All right? Wow. Where he was the man of a team. He was the quarterback of an organization. And now he's relegated to being the backup of Drew Brees in New Orleans. He chooses – you know, well, he could be a free agent. Does he want to go here? Does he want to go there? He chooses to stay in New Orleans and, and stay as a backup because he liked the locker room. He liked the offense that Sean Payton was running. He liked the teammates and things that, it, you know, the fact that he could grow more under the tutelage of Drew Brees and Sean Payton and not knowing that he'd ever play another down because 
Last year, he didn't play any meaningful down, any meaningful snaps. Now he's stressing to being a starter again after having a rough, a rough first game, first being back. He's getting called out by people like Rex Ryan saying he can't throw. He's not this. They got to have Taysom Hill, all these other things. And all he does is go out there and lead that team to a victory and do everything that he needs to do to prepare and go out there and win a game on a tough environment. And he just says, hey, look, you guys cherish this moment because this can be taken from anybody at any point in time. Yeah. It's just that easy. It's just that sensitive. And he's been through it. So it's coming from a place, you know, when you, when you, when you become, when you go through things like that, uh, you know, it just really changes you. Um, when you're affected, you become an advocate for something. And that was just, he's just one of those moments. We're talking to Roman Harper, Saints great, Alabama grad. Uh, here on Off the Bench, 104.5, Hunter with the 94.7 ESPN. Um, Ro, nobody's better at talking about the secondary and what it takes to stop a great passing attack. Uh, how do you feel about the Saints secondary matching up with Amari and Dak, who Dak's really hot right now? Yeah, not only that, but uh, Randall Cobb has been a huge boost to yes. the Dallas Yeah, that's offense. a good point. Now, I, I think Randall Cobb, and I, and I got to be honest with you, I think the MVP for Dallas Cowboys right now has to be Kellen Moore, the offensive coordinator. I mean, he's, he's made this offense so much more rel- relevant, relative. And it's not just Dak Prescott figuring out some other things, but the position that they're putting him in is making throws a lot easier. So I, I think it's going to be a tough – it's going to be a tough one. But, you know, Amari Cooper, he's best at the line of scrimmage where he's able to really displace guys and beat DBs. He beats all the guys on the line of scrimmage. He's one of the best route runners and wide receivers right off the line of scrimmage. He wins 90% of the, the routes right there in those first two yards. So if you look at that, I think that's going to be a tough matchup. That's just what he does. And, you know, and also having Zeke Elliott at running back where now you have to put eight, nine guys in the box consistently because you can't just let this guy – get downhill runs on your uh, on your defense. I think it's going to be a really great matchup because the Saints are really good against the run interiorly, so they don't have to put a whole bunch of extra people in the back and focus on that. They like to play four, four guys in the back and kind of mix up some zone and man pressures off of that. So And and now that allows you to maybe double Amari Cooper. Let's make sure we have an extra guy instead of P.J. Williams just one-on-one with Randall Cobb. Let's have some guys with some extra eyes, whether Von Bell sliding over from the opposite side. Because let's be honest here, Dallas is tight end. I mean, he's not the biggest down the field, all right? I know they got the backup. <laughs> but, I mean, Jason Wynn's like 38 years old. Yeah. He's not going downfield, all right? Everybody play underneath every route that he's going to run, play underneath. And now you're able to double the slot a little bit, and you can also help with the other safety on top of Amari Cooper. And let's go from there. That's where I would want to start defensively-wise. Let's scheme it and game plan from there. And then – up front, hey, guys, Daniel Automata, Sam Jordan, all right, Trey Hendricks, you guys have got to get a hold of this run game. Yeah. A.J. Klein, we can't let this running back get to rolling downhill on our defensive backfield. It's on you guys. And as long as you know that going into it, I feel like you're a little bit more confident because at the end of the day, hey, look, I know what I'm going into. I know what I got. And let's go get it done from there, mano y mano. I mean, I love it. Roman Harper giving you a great kind of base defensive game plan for how to try to stop this Dallas attack. Ro, how much uh, does it help being in the dome uh, when, when, when you're trying to look for a big defensive performance? If it helps, what, what do you think? Well, well it's got to help. you you got to have the dome there. Uh, you got to use it. All right? I need a couple false start penalties. Yep. All right, I need them to call a timeout. I don't need it. the Act Prescott to be able to look on the sideline and give a couple checks. Here and there, I need this crowd into it because that's the only advantage you have on defense is fear, which you can't hit people that much, so fear is going down. And now you got a home field advantage. It's just what it is. Those are the only things you got on defense. Everything, all the rules are built for the offense. Yeah, so you got to understand that. It, it, so they need this crowd. They need everybody to be involved. And this is how this game is. has to be won. I think Sean Payton does an amazing job. He's the best coach I ever was. We're going through the game. We're going to know exactly – how we're going to win this game. And I'm sure he's going to talk about that. Hey, we got to be great on third down. We got to force this team, you know, to, to, you know, to have three and outs. You got to have the opportunity to get, you know, um, sorry, I just walked in the house and saw my dog. I know that goes, that goes, bro. No worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so you got to have, you got to be able to force this team to have three and outs and you got to, you know, put your offense on short field. That's what gave them the opportunity to be able to score, 
It kept the screen game alive, and we didn't put too much pressure on Teddy Bridgewater. To go out there and win the game, you manage it and go win the game as a team. Talking to Roman Harper, Super Bowl champ, two-time Pro Bowler, Row, uh... What did you think? And I know he had a fumble later on, but how about Deontay Harris' punt return for a touchdown, man? Like, can you teach that kind of return ability, or do you just have it or not? Look, man. You look. First of all, I'm I'm too scared to get back there and return a punt. I'm, <laughs> there's nowhere in the world I would return a punt. It's people running down there trying to kill you, and this is the only time they play in the game. <laughs> That's so <laughs> That's true. So I never even it's thought never about even that. Thought dude. It was good. <laughs> People don't understand, like, right, dude. Fresh legs. People, yeah, fresh legs. It's a different mentality. These people are running down here, making hundreds of thousands of dollars, <laughs> and all they're doing is trying to just kill you, separate <laughs> man from ball. That's it. That's all they're doing. So let's be honest. It takes a different type of breed of person to get back there to be able to run. And there's no better feeling to starting a game off with a punt return for touchdown. That yeah, is how you good. get momentum. Those are the hidden things that just like immediately. Seattle's already behind the eight ball, and now you got the momentum rolling on the field, on the road. There's, there's no better feeling. Those little things like that, and Sean Payton will tell you, there's no better feeling in the world when you're on the road and having that home crowd boo at halftime because yeah. their team is losing. He that, said it. That is when you know you're doing it right. He mentioned it a couple times in the postgame. I got, I got 45 seconds left. What's going on with Cam Newton? Dude, he's not healthy. Yeah. He's not healthy. He has to be healthy for them to give him a chance. You know, I'm proud of Kyle Allen. He played a great game this last time. But, you know, let's be honest here. Arizona's not a great team. So, you know, you're supposed to beat bad teams on your schedule. They did that. They gave one away to Tampa Bay. Even though Tampa Bay finds ways to lose a game week after week, <laughs> like they did last week against the Giants. You know, shout out to Daniel Jones. He did good, whatever. But Tampa Bay still should have won the game. They they missed a the kick again. Yeah, they did. Uh, Ro, you get better every week, man. I Looking forward you. to next week. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Roll tight. I can't. Hey, Ro, come on. <laughs> Close Jesus. it out next. <laughs>